rather out-of-the-way air museum is the Tillamook Air Museum in Tillamook, Oregon, in the northwestern corner of the state, near the Pacific Ocean coastline. In this sleepy town, often shrouded in fog, is one of the remaining, few remaining, uh, blimp hangars from World War II. This is one of the largest wooden structures ever built, and the building itself is special and worth a visit. However, I had heard since previous visits that the building itself had a lot of wood rot and was being condemned or otherwise limited in use by the authorities that own it or operate it, and that the Air Museum was moving out to a new location in the desert part of the state, somewhat further east and on the east side of the mountain range. The future of the building itself remained unknown or uncertain at best, and I thought it was worth paying what may be my final visit to the museum. There were very few planes in the museum remaining when I visited on June 3rd, 2014, but one of the surprises was that the museum's Aerospace Lines Mini Guppy was on full display. Uh, it had been closed on all of my previous visits, so I thought I would put this video together to document my visit to the Mini Guppy. Aerospace Lines built several different kinds of guppies, and the Mini Guppy is hardly the largest. There were only two Mini Guppies built. The other one crashed at Edwards Air Force Base. So this is the remaining example of the model. This plane is owned by Jack Erickson, who also owns most of the airplanes in the Tillamook Air Museum. There's a great website called allaboutguppies.com that lists tons of information on all the different types of guppy aircraft. The Mini Guppy weighed 85,000 pounds and had a maximum cargo weight of 41,120 pounds. It had a 156 foot wingspan, was 133 feet long, the top of the fuselage was a bit over 27 feet above ground. The top of the tail, 38 feet above ground. This Mini Guppy had its first flight on May 24, 1967, and carried its first cargo two days later on May 26 on a flight to the Paris Air Show. This plane was featured in the 1992 movie Universal Soldier in the opening scenes. This is one of the few places you can see this plane in operation. Inside this mini guppy is a small photo gallery showing pictures of the plane uh, at the museum in earlier times, shortly after it had arrived, as well as when it was in normal cargo carrying service.
So this is the hinge side of the tail. It looks like there's one primary pin. I'm guessing the actual hinges are on the outside of the fuselage, but all the hoses and everything loop around here. And then following it around, there are several more clamps and pneumatic aligning, or I suppose hydraulic aligning pins with their limit switches. Limit switch on the left, piston on the right. That keep the tail end aligned and in place during flight. This is what's really telling about this. You can see the original diameter of the B-29 that this plane was based on and then the diameter of the enlarged fuselage. The uh, pallet pulley goes right up to the back of the cockpit. Cargo can go on these rails all the way up to the back of the cockpit. <clears throat> and there are these hydraulic pins with the hydraulic cylinders covered by the red covers and these can pop out and lock into the side of the pallet so it doesn't move. So now in the cockpit, two rest chairs and a hatch out into the outer skin. There's a fire exit right there, so I suppose this is the quickest way to egress the cockpit one hatch to the other. A couple of crew rest bunks. Not much else except for lighting.
There's the big hinges on the outside as I thought. This old bird is falling apart out here in this Oregon weather. Nice that it's here, but unfortunate for the condition of the plane. Rather crude fairing built to get the uh, airflow from the wing fared out to the fuselage. Not the nice curvy one like Boeing would have done it. When the aerospace lines converted the plane from the original Boeing 377, they did not upgrade the power plants. So the plane still has the original Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP Major engines. There's the outside of that emergency escape hatch for the cockpit. Part of the hangar is used for the museum. They make ends meet by renting out other parts of it for RV storage, boat storage, all sorts of things. And most of the planes in here are flying planes that belong to various collectors and they store them here in the off season and uh, obviously pay some rent for that as well.